Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to be installing a solar panel on the rooftop tent, on the Drifter rooftop tent, and going to be wiring that up to a 72 amp hour uh, Topo Centrifire lithium battery. And we're also going to be wiring that battery up to the alternator. So I've got vehicle charge, solar charge, and it'll all be connected to our 69 litre ARV fridge in the back. So stay tuned for that. Yeah, that's pretty handy. It's another beautiful November's day in 2022. Got about 10 to 15 mil forecasted for today and high winds of 60 kilometers an hour. So shed is where I'm at today. So let's have a look. This is what we've got. Look at a 69 liter ARB fridge and a Topo lithium battery. 72 amp hour to wire up. First up, we're going to look at mounting the battery. So we've got a pretty good strong um, mount for the battery there. This is just a pretty cheap thing from Bunnings and it holds it there nice and sturdy. So that'll be able to go back in the car soon. For now, we're just gonna run wires. So I've got this wire running nicely into there and then we're just gonna run it back up through this grommet here and then back up through that gap because that gap actually stays consistent. You'll see as you shut it. So that'll be, that'll be fine to run a wire down through. And then that's gonna go up underneath the floor into the tent. And then I'm gonna mount the solar panel up the front of the tent. Obviously I tried to find the neatest and safest path for this wire that I could. Um, it managed to slot down nicely in behind the plastic trim. And then obviously I tested to make sure that there was nothing pinching the wire by pulling it through a little bit either way. So the other thing we're gonna run is this big heavy wire that's gonna go from the alternator to the battery. Now that's gonna be able to handle 50 amps of current, 50 amp charger in the battery. Um, so yeah, obviously we've gotten like 60 or 70 amp wire and yeah, we're just going to run that with a circuit breaker from the starter battery, the main battery through to the lithium battery. Generally, this is the grommet I use, as you can clearly see for getting wires through the passenger side of the firewall. This is what we'll be using today. Obviously being such a thick wire, it was gonna be a challenge to pull through the firewall grommet. Um, so I made sure that this was not gonna slip off. I've gone for a bit of a fishing hook approach on the wire and I'm gonna tape this up obviously to make sure it goes through nicely and doesn't damage anything else on the way. I could have saved myself 30 bucks. Probably didn't need two meters of this. Yeah. Once again, I've run this wire in the neatest way possible um, with the least amount of wire exposed to the inside of the vehicle as possible. I've run it underneath the carpet trims over the wheel arch and out this little um, ashtray kind of um, port in the back that just pops out and yeah, they'll come out nice and neatly here right at the front of the battery. So it's worked out really well. So I found this painted um, 
I think it's steel, just like a real light steel or aluminium or something. But I went and cut a piece of that and cleaned it up nice. Now that's gonna work as a bracket for my circuit breaker. So it's gonna mark some holes, drill them, paint it up and install it. And it's going, it's gonna sit just here where these two go. So it'll be in a nice position that I can just put that heavy wire in and run it out to the batteries. With the circuit breaker mounted in the engine bay like it was meant to be there from factory, I got into cutting up some angled aluminium. I'm gonna pop rivet this to the solar panel so that I have a means of mounting the solar panel to the rooftop tent. I was really impressed with the dry fit of the solar panel. I think that a meter square is about the perfect size to go on top of these drifter rooftop tents. I'm pretty sure the solar panel's one meter by 990 mil. So yeah, no, it's about perfect. Um, once it was dry fit, we can go ahead and mark the holes. Um, one of my holes looked like a bird had pooed on top of the rooftop tent. So I had to wipe that one up and remark it. And then it was time to drill. The rooftop tent is, it's kind of like a double layered aluminium. It's insulated, um, which I think is great. So it was actually pretty easy to drill through. I drilled obviously four holes for the solar panel and a larger hole for the wiring to go through. Now, because it was double layered, it was a little bit hard to get a grommet in there or two grommets in there. Um, and it's also like a honeycomb pattern inside. So instead we decided just to find a bit of this, um, it's like a screw, wire protector conduit kind of plasticky thing. Um, and that slipped over the wires all right. And we just kind of screwed that through the hole so it went all the way through the two layers. I was actually gonna go with a flexible solar panel for the rooftop tent, uh, just for ease of install. But I, for a few reasons, went with a, a um, solid solar panel. And that was mainly because um, it's going to last longer. Solid solar panels are heaps sturdier and they're not going to wear out as fast as a flexible one with the core flute backing. Um, and also, now, whether this is practical or not, technically, a solid solar panel is going to be more efficient simply because it's not down on a flat surface and it's not going to be attracting as much heat. There's space underneath the solar panel for a bit of airflow. Now, solar panels optimally run at like 25 degrees Celsius. Just in case you're wondering, a solar panel contains two layers of silicon. One that's basically missing an electron and one that has an extra electron. Now, when light hits this silicon, it excites an electron and allows the electron to move from one layer of silicon to the other. Now, a moving particle creates a charge. So why does heat affect this? Well, it's because um, an electron can also be excited by heat. Um, instead of just light. So on a hot day, these electrons are already in an excited state in a higher level of energy. So they don't have the potential to move um, when they're hit by that light. So it actually reduces the efficiency and the output of the solar panel. So obviously the cooler you can keep them the better because it doesn't take much for it to get really hot on top of that dark colored rooftop tent. So yeah, if you can keep it up off the ground a little bit, it's going to get that airflow, you're going to stay cooler and it's going to be more efficient technically. With the solar panel mounted and the wiring run, it was pretty much time to bring the cruiser out and test it. So you can see on the display that we have both vehicle and solar charge at the moment. Vehicle being the blue plug, solar the red, 
and the grey plugs are our outputs. Well, everything's mounted and functional, but the testing was far from done. So I hope this video was kind of helpful for anyone that's looking to set up a solar panel on their rooftop tent um, and wire it up. I think uh, the install was pretty neat today. I was pretty happy with how that went. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.